Good evening and welcome to Injustice Investigation. This is a breaking news story. We're not going to hold you long. Uh, <clears throat> two stories we're following uh, uh, closely here. One is R. Kelly and the new sex tape. And there is some more developments in the case of uh, Justice, the Empire actor uh, who alleges that he was assaulted uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, let's get with R. Kelly first. Uh, <clears throat> CNN has uh, looked at a tape of R. Kelly having sex with a 14-year-old girl. And they said they know she's 14 years old because in the sex tape, uh, uh, good evening, uh, Miss uh, Mary. In the sex tape, uh, she refers to her body parts as the body parts of a 14-year-old girl. Uh, the attorney who sent the tape to CNN, has since sent the tape to the proper authorities. Now, inside sources say an unidentified uh, police officer says that R. Kelly could possibly be indicted soon. He went on to say he looked for R. Kelly to be arrested uh, soon. So we, we'll keep following that to let you know uh, what's going on with that. Of course, this is nothing new for R. Kelly because he's faced these same allegations many years ago. I think he beat 21 counts similar to what he could be uh, charged with uh, if that would be the case. So again, uh, CNN has looked at the tape and uh, said it was authentic. The police now have it and uh, we're just waiting on them to finish their in, uh, investigation. You know, R. Kelly beat the what, 21 charges a while back. Uh, but I think things might be winding down for the uh, self-proclaimed Pied Piper himself, R. Kelly. If you listen to any of R. Kelly's uh, music throughout the years, he really didn't keep it a secret that he was a, a child predator. If you listen to some of the songs, uh, you go back and say, that's what he was telling us. That's what he was telling us. So a lot of times we get caught up in the in the beat, you know, and it sounds good and all that stuff, but we, we're really not paying attention to what's uh, going on. But one thing I do know about this is that it was impossible for R. Kelly to have pulled all of this off without any help. His security team, his managers, agents, assistants, nobody knew anything. And that's a lie. It was impossible for R. Kelly to have pulled all of this off by himself. So we're going to keep a, a close watch on that for you. Now, breaking news with uh, 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 Justin, that uh, actor from Empire who's acting quite well this evening. Um, he appeared on uh, uh, Good Morning America today with uh, uh, co-anchor Robin Roberts and he did what he do best, he act. Uh, she asked him one of the questions is um, why did you keep the rope around your neck? Uh, you had it on when the police arrived. Well, I wanted them to see me as it had happened. How I looked then. And I said, okay, didn't still didn't make any sense. Okay, we'll ride with that. But here's the thing. You wanted them to see it. I can understand that. But why did you ask the individual that called the police? It's a female. We're going to play that tape for you. Uh, put it up later on tonight. The 911 call. Well, she says, he is a well-known individual, but do not cut your body cams off. Please tell your officers when they come, do not have their body cams on. White guy on my YouTube page made a post, and I'm going to share it eventually here, hopefully sometime tonight. And I laughed, and I totally agree with him. Uh, his post was simple. He said, wow, this might be the first black man in history that asked the police officers to turn off their body cam. And he's probably right. Even if I'm the victim, and I'm calling the damn police, I don't want your body cams on. Anybody next to me, close by me, start filming. I don't know what the hell's going to happen. But this actor says, uh, tell them to cut their body cams off. Didn't make any effort damn sense. So a lot of things are just not making sense. When we first heard the report, it was a container of bleach. Okay, I'm going to take you somewhere. It was a container of bleach. It was a container of bleach that officers never found. They looked... Day in, day out, they couldn't find it. Well, a New York Post reporter <clears throat> showed up. Well, I'm going to do my own investigation because maybe the police officers missed something. That sometimes they can. 
And he searched and he searched. And then from out of nowhere, breaking news story. Bam! I have found the bleach. I found the bleach. Really? He found the bleach in a damn hot sauce bottle. Do you know how hard it is to get anything inside the hot sauce bottle unless you have a funnel? But who would go through all that damn trouble if you're trying to get it from one container to something else? Wouldn't you get something that's more easy for you to pour in? I would think, but who the hell am I? So, he found it close to the scene where the alleged attack happened. He found the hot sauce bottle with bleach. It had a little bleach in it, and you could still smell the bleach. Don't make any earthly damn sense whatsoever. Uh, Jesse <clears throat> waited 42 minutes before they decided to go ahead and call the police and tell them to come. Jesse, instead of going straight home after the attack, took the long way home. After he had just been attacked, he didn't go straight home. He took the long way home. I don't know, maybe he was going back down memory lane. I don't know what he was doing. But here's the thing. When he got there, he said, First report, I was on the phone with my manager. And the manager agreed, yes. They wouldn't release the cell phone. Okay. Well, the public got upset. Well, why should he have to release his cell phone and he's the victim? Well, that's, that's normal. That's normal doing an investigation. Especially when you said I was on the phone talking to my manager during the alleged attack. And my manager heard the racial slurs and the homophobic slurs. Slurs. So the manager, yes, he did. I, I was right. I heard everything. So what did they do? Both of them made their cell phones part of a crime scene. Part of a crime scene that they didn't want to turn over. Well, I didn't want to do that. That's what he's telling Robert Roberts because I had some pictures in there. And I, I can understand that. They, they know you're gay. They don't care nothing about no foot longs or half subs or nothing in there. This is an investigation. You've been receiving threats at Fox Studio. You've been receiving threats on your cell phone. Let us look at it so we can apprehend the individuals that inflicted this hate crime on you. We, we will not tolerate this in, in Chicago, Illinois. We are going to arrest him. No, I don't want to have my phone yet. So they didn't do it. A few days later, they turned it in in the PDF form, which means that is a form to where you can manipulate the system. You can add numbers. You can take numbers out and do whatever you want to do with it. So Chicago police sent it back, said, we don't want it. Reject it. We want the real deal. Well, now, two men were detained. These men may not be the perpetrators, but may have just been in the vicinity when it occurred. Well, two men were also picked up from the O'Hara Chicago <clears throat> airport when their plane landed. One of these men we know right now is said to be uh, an actor on the uh, on Empire. He is a, uh, I think he's an extra or a double. He's an extra on there. Another gentleman was with him at the time. Both of those have been detained as well. Well, what we didn't know until a little while ago is that tonight's Thursday. Last night, the uh, police department raided the home of the two persons of interest in the justice uh, alleged hate crime attack. I think these men are from uh, Africa, I think, that's in, in there. I think that's what they're saying, of African descent. They have appeared, or both of them, they have appeared on the show as extras. So both of these men have appeared on the Empire show as extras. Now, I'm going to give you something. What do you think the police found when they raided these two individuals' home last night? I'll tell you, you ain't got to answer, I'll tell you. The police said they seized one, two, three, four, five bottles of bleach. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Damn, they do a lot of washing. I guess you want to say clean. Okay, I ain't going to do that. They received, uh, uh, I mean, uh, seized a, what color hat you think they found? Red! They received a red hat. Two laptops and other items they won't go into right now. 
Do anybody see a connection here or is it just me? And speak now forever, hold your peace. Listen, I don't know why he did it, but he guilty. He did it. He did it. He did it. So I look for him to be arrested real soon. And as I always say, I hope to God they make him foot the whole bill of his fool's error. Because that's all what it was. I'm reading something else today. Oh, they also took shoes, electronics, and other items that we will not go into uh, right now. But we do want you all to know that we, we found the bleach. The bleach. So two men have been detained. Uh, we don't know if those are the two men that uh, Chicago police uh, uh, put out, those images that they put out. Sure, but they're two after the, uh, their last attack happened. Uh, but here's, here's one thing before I forget, before we go, that Jesse told, uh, has been saying, once those two images came out, here's what Jesse said, that's them! How in the hell can you tell who they are? We don't know if they're black, white, male, or female. We just don't know. But just said, that's them. Just said, how do you know? Did you see how blurry it was? You couldn't tell nothing. Nothing. But he said, I, I know that's them. How, Jesse? How, Jesse? Jesse been lying. Jesse said, when I was fighting, I had my cell phone in my pocket. I had my cell phone in my pocket while I was fighting. It was a 60-second fight. 60 seconds. At first, I'm on the phone with my manager, and we're both talking during the whole ordeal. We're talking during the whole ordeal. But now he said, no, my phone was in my pocket, and I left it on so my manager could hear Manager heard everything, didn't call the police. Because they told the police, I heard the racial and the homophobic slurs. Okay, well, uh, what I want to know, Jesse, is that you said today to Robin Roberts on Good Morning America, you told her today, I'm sitting there listening, that they called you when they first saw you. Now, remember this night in Chicago was extremely cold. Even the burglars was home that it was so cold. So everybody wrapped up. But Jesse said they immediately knew who he was. Immediately. And they said, Empire! You that motherfucker from Empire! I ain't gonna answer to that, Rob, because I ain't that, that ain't my name, Empire. Well, I can understand that, but he know what the hell they meant. You know, it's like somebody see me in the street. Justice investigation. Alright, how y'all doing? I know this man. You know? But he didn't answer to them calling him. Empire. But when they said, you motherfucking nigga, he said, who the fuck, what the fuck you said to me? Oh, you can answer to nigga, but you won't answer to empire. It don't make any earthly damn sense. None whatsoever. If we, if it is a hate crime being committed, a hate crime being committed by two people, two white people and you black, if that's a hate crime, if they're going to beat you, you would not walk away from that fight with one scratch like a 12-year-old girl did it by accident. Doesn't make any sense. The police had to insist that you go to the hospital. Doesn't make any sense. The police asked you, well, who bought a salad? I did. Well, who bought that sandwich? I did. Well, you bought that in after the attack? Yeah, I got the salad and the, uh, and the sandwich, and when I came out, so the police look, damn, man, you, you really good when you act, because that salad's still in, 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 in place. The sandwich still together. And your cell phone is still together. It didn't fall out your pocket at all. Not at all. This is a manufactured crime by justice. Why? I don't know. That's the biggest problem right there. If you can get to the why he did it, then we can end this faster. But I have to applaud the Chicago Police Department and the FBI because they own it. Things he didn't think that they would think about. They're thinking about it. Now, he's a hell of an actor on the show, but in real life acting, he sucks. I'm Al Scott with Just Investigations. When more breaking news come on this story, you know I'm going to keep you all informed. Until then, may God continue to keep you. And remember, I'm not always right. You are not always wrong. We'll see you on the radio.